It just looks easy, man. It just looks easy. I have fun, don't get me wrong. It just looks easy. I enjoy smiling. I love laughing. But sometimes those things you love, you have to um, moderate yourself with. I mean, you can't laugh all the time. You can't laugh always or you would get nothing else done. <laughs> you can't laugh at inappropriate times. Otherwise, you would never be taken serious. But you can always smile. Even when things aren't going your way. Even when the outlook isn't looking positive. It's looking rather bleak. You can still smile. On the inside, you can be laughing. <laughs> Hello, my name is Alex. I'm a corporate cowboy. This is another installment of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Today is Sunday, March 14th. Daylight savings has begun. That said, I just wanted to touch on um on on some positive vibes, on those positive vibes. I know a lot of a lot of uh events current events that are happening right now are tumultuous for a lot of people that means you know they're a cause for concern and folks are losing their minds on social media and personal media you know starting to write their fucking suicide notes and all that good bullshit that i'll never be a party to <laughs> and um and I I don't know what it is they expected. I mean, this shit is corporate. This is um this is same shit, different toilet. Maybe the toilet bowl is getting smaller and smaller. And you're supposed to act more I don't know, more quaint. You're expected to be um this this uh Uber, hold on, hold on. You're you're expected to be this comic version of a professional where you get fucked in the ass and not only do you not complain but you ask for more. Nah, that's that's all fucking bullshit. You got to be a corporate cowboy in these days. You don't get fucked. You fuck around and find out. See, I'd much rather work with corporate than for corporate. I would much rather be um, be an associate than an employee. Though sometimes you do have to get employed. You got to get on somebody's payroll to pop up on somebody else's radar. And in that way, send a message. But it's all about making it look easy. It's all about making it look easy. You see, I'm having fun, even if I'm dying, even if it's my last breath, my last gasp, and I'm spitting up blood. I'm having fun, man. I'm having fun out here. And I, I, a corporate cowboy knows that, well, not knows, but learns, learns and works to find fun where there would otherwise not be any. How else do you expect to recruit someone who doesn't know anything about corporate? Doesn't know the first thing about sacrifice. Doesn't know the first thing about the value of a dollar. The value of a dollar. It's easy to spend. Way easy to fucking spend. Question is, can you make it look easy to make a dollar? How easy is it to get a dollar? Sure, you see panhandlers on the street asking for some change, asking for a dollar. You got a dollar to spare. You got some change. Maybe they got a bullshit story to accompany it. Now my car broke down. I got, again, I got kids to feed. They're still working in corporate. I mean, this is just one large corporation where where the what is it where the ranks the ranks are never ending and the hierarchy doesn't stop you'll never reach the top you'll you'll never reach the fucking top 
as soon as you think you as soon as you think you do or as soon as you think you have and you look down and you look down there's somebody else coming to get you somebody else who's who's uh who's more hungry than you are somebody who's a corporate cowboy and not hesitant to knock that fucking crown off of your head <laughs> why because crowns get in the way crowns get in the way of ski masks that's all i suppose you could wear one on top uh, cross that bridge when we get there if ever but to make it look easy to make it look easy is is, is to be cool pretty much when i was younger i think i mentioned this before when i was younger cool was like being dangerous being dangerous was being cool cool had like an element an, an innate element of inherent danger to it and if you could navigate this danger and if you knew how to confront this danger if you were comfortable with the danger if you could manipulate the danger if you were dangerous you were cool but nobody fucking tells you. Nobody fucking tells you how difficult it is to be dangerous. And, I mean, still cultivate trust. Still engender confidence in people. Not scare people, essentially. Not have people become afraid of you just because you're dangerous. And I got plenty of associates that I would never cross. I got plenty of associates that I would never shake hands with. It's just folks that I know. It's just it's just how you know folks, how you trust people, how you create, how you cultivate confidence in them. And some of them make it look easy. Some of them make it look easy to be outgoing, to not be shy, to be outspoken, to take the initiative, take that first step, to reach out your hand. Not to ask, not to beg, right? Like, but to reach out your hand and shake another. To make those introductions. To make that entry. To take advantage of that way in. I feel like few and far in between know exactly how to do that. And I make it look easy. I make it look easy. But it started since I was young. It started since I was young. I was told to get out there and put myself out there and um, and get accustomed to talking to strangers. Become accustomed to making an introduction. Obviously, I, I, um, I, I was pretty successful. I wasn't shy. I wasn't scared. I wasn't afraid of rejection. To me, I, it was a numbers game before I knew it was a numbers game. I just didn't stop. And a lot of kids, a lot of kids, I'm not a fucking kid anymore, but a lot of individuals came up like this. When we were younger, we had to uh, fundraise for ourselves, for school, for recreational sports. Our parents would sign us up or, you know, you'd just become an active member and you'd have to fundraise, go door to door, knock on doors, come up with a little spiel, some kind of um, some kind of uh, pitch, a selling pitch, in order to get those funds for school trips, for team equipment, for uniforms, and that takes a certain level of confidence. It also takes overcoming anxiety takes overcoming anxiety it's not that the anxiety just doesn't exist sure there is a minute fraction of the population that just doesn't experience anxiety am i in that population probably not to do so you'd have to be a legit what is it a psychopath a legit psychopath and not feel emotion when you're interacting with humans. A matter of fact, you'd probably have to be trained on how to feel anxiety in order to display it, <laughs> in order to understand it. And even then, you probably wouldn't understand it because just displaying it, just going through the motions of being nervous, 
don't constitute you being nervous. But encountering nervousness, confronting nervousness, experiencing and going through this nervousness and addressing it by taking that first step, it's like um, it's like the first time you jump into a pool of water. It's the first time you're at the edge of a diving board. It's the first time where you're not even... It's it's the first time you're jumping off of the swing. You see, so like you're already stimulated in the sense that you're swinging back and forth, back and forth. You're having fun. And you're going about your regular session on the swing, your regular life in real life. And you see the opportunity. The opportunity comes back and forth, back and forth. And you're the one who's pacing. You're the one who doesn't know whether to take the first step, knock on that door, ring that doorbell, make that call, send that email. Until you jump. Until you jump off. Until you jump off. And you and you won't know what the ground feels like coming at you at nowhere near terminal velocity, right? But you jumped off of the swing and when you're younger and you jump off at at the peak, at, at, uh, what is it called? At the highest point, when you jump off at the highest point of the swing, you feel like you're over the fucking swing structure. You feel like you're on top of the world for a split second. And then you come down and it's how you come down. That pretty much dictates how successful you will be in mitigating your fall. And mitigating the outcome, be it positive or negative. But it's that jump. It's that jump to knock on the door. It's that jump to make the introduction. Whether or not you want to use your name, you don't have to use your name. You could say, hey, good afternoon. I represent yada, yada, yada. Easy. It's like having them open the door and asking them if they've Got a moment to talk about their Lord and Savior, corporate. <laughs> yes, I'm being facetious. I'm being silly. But I'm not way off. I'm not off. I'm not off. I just make it look easy. I just make it look easy. I've stood in a group, in a group huddle, and um, have been voluntold, essentially. Not too different from starting this podcast though I was more than happy to uh to be the host for this because it allows me to practice my oratory skills my public speaking skills the way I think and assemble thoughts using logic and tact Storytelling even, though I don't tell too many stories because the show isn't necessarily about me. The podcast isn't necessarily about just me. It's about being a corporate cowboy in modern day society. Modern day society has a lot to learn about corporate cowboys. Corporate has been running things from the very beginning and very few people understand what it means to be inside of corporate, inside of corporate, not just employed by corporate. You have to be actively inside of corporate. For lack of a better word, infiltrating corporate. And even then, we don't stay too long. Corporate cowboys shoot from the hip and do it moving. Why? Because we run on instinct. We run on what is better, on what is good. We run on what will keep corporate alive. Even if it means knocking executives down, even if it means knocking down the brainchild, it happens. Why? Sometimes the brainchild isn't a righteous person. Sometimes the founder, the inventor is not a righteous person. And it, it could be due to age even. It could be due to age. But um, 
I didn't ask for this life. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I gotta stop saying that too. I'm not about that life. I'm more about that death. Which is easier, if you ask me. Because I don't even have to... I don't have to ask for it. I'm looking forward to it. But I don't have to plan it. I don't have to do anything. I know it's just coming. It's just coming. And there's nothing really I can do about it. I can only do so much to... um, to make it righteous. But at a certain point, I think humans, professional or not, come to grips with death in their own way. And some of them are very gracious, are graceful, are righteous, and uh, let it happen naturally. And I mean, I do mean naturally in every sense of the word, whether it's through, uh, well, I I, I was going to say natural causes, but hey, natural causes can be brought on by another human too. (laughs) So either through natural causes or, or other means. And then there are other people who would still count themselves as professionals, who still might count themselves as corporate cowboys, who have to be ushered out and I know talking about life and death I don't know for some people it's taboo fucking everything triggers people nowadays everything except actual triggers I love punching triggers so even if it is taboo at the end of the day the more What is it? Narcissistic? No, not even narcissistic. Self. Self preservatory one becomes, the more of a danger they are to corporate. See, so notice how I just stopped saying society. I work for corporate. At the end of the day, the hierarchy is here to serve us, the hierarchy is here to serve those in the lower rank. That's why the hierarchy is even there. It's for fuckers on the, for fuckers, for motherfuckers on the lower ranks to recognize that there is a path, that there is a path forward, that there is a path up, that there is a way to remain righteous and still take advantage of opportunities to have more responsibility, to have more, just to have more. There are some who are very comfortable, very comfortable in not having to share resources, not having to share responsibility, though they are responsible, though they've got the resources. <clears throat> and, um, and, um, capitalism, capitalism would dictate that that's not a good idea <laughs> to hoard. <laughs> It's not a good idea. It's a good idea to save and invest. Don't get me wrong, because that's how you invest. You first save a a certain amount of capital, some predetermined amount of capital in order to invest. But capitalism is is a recurring cycle. It's a recurring cycle. And again, talking about it makes it look easy. But when you're a little higher up the hierarchy... When you're a little ways up the hierarchy and the ground looks like it's further away from you and you're at the top and you don't jump off and you don't jump off, somebody else wants to turn on the swing. (laughs) See how I brought that back? See how I brought that back full circle? When you're at the very fucking top, because again, money comes and goes, opportunity comes and goes forward and back to you and not and you don't jump off what are you going to do hoard the swing when other folks want to turn see now I'm making life sound like a fucking playground I'm making life look easy and it's not (laughs) 
anyways, I'm on uh, double duty this week, so this might be only one. I'm going to try to do two episodes this week, see what happens. But you want to visit us on the page on Instagram, do that. The handle is at incorporating underscore associates dot IA. Again, that's at incorporating dot associates underscore IA. If you want to uh, sponsor us, by all means, do so on Patreon. That's the Corporate Cowboys podcast. You'll find us. Don't have any episodes there. Most of the episodes I do are free unless you are requesting a uh, some kind of direct consultation. Maybe you need a friend. Maybe you need some cathartic release and you just want to talk about it. Then by all means, we can um, we can discuss, we can converse in a consultative manner. Do that. Uh, you can send us a DM. You can send us an email. If you want to donate, this is a nonprofit operation. PayPal.me slash corporate cowboys. Shoot us some cash on Cash App. I think that's dollar sign corporate cowboys. And Venmo, that's Alex underscore Coco for corporate cowboys. Making life look easy. Again, I just made it sound easy, but I also prefaced it with the fact that not everybody is wired that way. Sure, we're all built to look similar. We're all built with two arms, two legs. I mean, with the exception of disfigurement and disability, we're all built to maybe look alike. We're all quote-unquote, children of God, but we're all wired differently. Some of us are just wired differently. Where we see a challenge and we automatically think, ooh, fun. And others see a challenge and somehow pull PTSD out of it. I mean, I'll, I'll never get it. I've never been in uh, armed conflict or served in the military. And if you have, that is understandable. But there's everyday conflict of just folks who've been raised on plush throw pillows. And uh, the first first challenge that comes their way is damn near the end of their life. Like anxiety, like what the fuck? Don't get frustrated. Hold on. Words. Use your words, Alex. Social anxiety is addressable, is a healthy challenge, is a challenge you should look forward to. Everybody wants a turn on the swing. Be happy it's your turn. And when you're at the highest point and... You imagine what it would be like to fly, then you jump off. Just keep in mind, you're going to land, whether you want to or not. That's the whole point. That's why you jump off at the highest point. You don't jump off as you're going up. You jump off at the highest point to carry you a little bit of a ways up higher Giving you that feeling that you're rising above the swing structure. (laughs) And then your stomach settles a little bit and you start coming down. That's where um, you're tasked to cushion your own fall. Where you have to take, you have to take the first affirmative step. In mitigating your own death. Yeah, you won't die jumping off of a swing. But it damn near feels like it when you're at the very tippy top. And you're swinging and you're flailing your arms and your legs trying to fly. And you're coming down. But in landing, you know what to do. You know to cushion your fall. 
by bending your knees, squatting a little bit as you hit the ground. And maybe you got good, really good at jumping off of the swing and you get to go really high. And you land on your on your uh, feet and your hands because you need uh, that much more buffering. That's all right. There are some projects that you will take on in corporate that are going to stretch you thin, that are going to stretch you thin. And how you mitigate, how you mitigate your fall, how you mitigate your downfall after you've taken that step to take on the responsibility, to take on those flying lessons. It's how you mitigate your fall that dictates your success. The difference between corporate and the playground is that not everybody gets in line for the swing. And that once you're on the swing and you take off in flight and you land, typically you get back in line to do it again. And in corporate, it's different because you can build off of your success and you necessarily won't have to do it again next time it'll be a bigger swing it'll be bigger risks it'll be more success and you'll be flying higher and higher don't worry there's no sun in corporate It's just fluorescent lighting.